If you care about privacy, you should be aware that saving files in plain text is a really bad idea. It makes them really easily searchable, and instead, it's pretty simple to save things in an encrypted format. Now this might seem unapproachable, but in general there are actually some really powerful and easy ways of doing so, and EncryptPad is a great example. This tool is capable of encrypting not only text files, but also binary files like an archive containing a bunch of different formats, and even photos on your hard drive. We'll explain how to use this exciting and interesting tool that works on most platforms on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. EncryptPad is an application that's optimized for encrypting data and then storing it on a hard drive, rather than sending it, which might be more useful for something like an asymmetric uh, encryption scheme like PGP. Now, if you've heard of PGP, it's optimized for having two different keys to access the data. But in our case, we'll be using symmetric encryption, which means there's only one key that we'll be using to unlock the encrypted file. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can just simply set a password, you can set a key file, or if you want both to be required to un, uh, decrypt the data, you'll, you can actually do both, which adds both layers of authentication, meaning you can just have a physical copy of the key with you that would make it so it's impossible to decrypt the information without it. There's a twist you can put on this too that I think is really interesting, where if you host a key file on a server, you can execute EncryptPad with a curl command that pulls the key file from that server before opening. Now imagine you got your laptop stolen. This would allow you to remove the key file from your server and make it so that none of the information that's been encrypted on the laptop could possibly be decrypted because the person just won't have access to that file anymore. Now there's a lot of other interesting ways you can put your own twist on this to save information in a secure fashion, and the best part of EncryptPad is that it's cross-platform. Meaning if you have a Windows, Mac OS, or Linux computer, you should be able to just go to the website and download the application. Once you have this, we can get started. Now, because EncryptPad is cross-platform, the easiest way to get started is just to navigate to the website uh, and go ahead and click on the latest release. Now here you should find a variety of different downloads for different packages, uh, and you'll see that it includes for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So once you download this package, you can go ahead and install it. I installed the DMG image for Mac OS. So once you have that, you should be able to open up the file. And you'll also notice on the same website that there are a variety of tutorials available, some of which will be covering similar content to what we are covering today. So if you get confused, you can always click on one of these and go and explore something even that we maybe don't have time to cover in this kind of more basic example. So first up, we'll go ahead and open EncryptPad. And you can see when it opens up, it's not very impressive. It's a pretty basic text editor. The font doesn't uh, really strike you as something that's too customizable uh, in terms of making things bold. It's just a basic text editor, like you would expect from any basic operating system since the very early Windows. So after that, you can kind of, let's go ahead and uh, I'll just take their own tutorial and paste the text in here. And we'll go ahead and go through the steps of taking this file from unprotected, which you can see here, password not set, key not set, all the way through being uh, encrypted so that nobody will be able to open it unless you want them to. So first thing, let's go ahead and create a key file. So we can click on encryption and we can set a passphrase just by adding one here and we'll just type nullbyte123. Now you can see that the part on the bottom here that indicates the level of encryption and security has updated and it now says we are password protected. Now this is also a, an opportunity for us to mess up. So if we set a password which is really bad like the one we used in our example, it's pretty likely that this would be able to be brute forced if it's the only level of security that we're using. Now already though, this is better than most people store their data, but we can take it to the next level by using an encryption key. So you can see a couple icons here that indicate we can both in, uh, set the encryption key file, we can generate a key, or we can clear the encryption key. So in this case, since we don't already have one, we'll need to go ahead and generate that key. 
Now, this is where we'll decide where to uh, put the key. And we can also uh, use a repository. And you can see the standard here uh, for what we'll need to do if we want to do this in portable mode. Now, what this means is that in portable mode, uh, you can use the uh, encrypted underscore repository fo uh, folder to indicate that you want to override the default behavior of looking within the user's uh, like default folder for the encryption settings. Now, generally, if you're on the same computer, that means that it will always look for a file that's not immediately like within itself. And that means that uh, if you go and try to open this up on someone else's computer, uh, the configuration settings, for example, how you encrypted it, might not be stored in the way that you need it. So this is an extra step you might need to take if you want to make this uh, portable. And you can read more about that on the website if that's something you're interested in. So here, we'll go ahead and choose our desktop. Uh, let's go ahead and name this as null byte key. And we'll save it as a .key file. And where is going to be the desktop? So we'll go ahead and save that. And it'll ask us for a key phrase. And that means that we'll add another layer so you can't just read the key file. You'll need to know a little bit of information first. And we'll make this different. We'll make this null byte 541. And my keys are a little sticky, but there we go. The energy drink did not destroy it. So do you want to use a generated key for this file? Yes, we do. So now you can see on the bottom, we have this key protected and uh, we have it also password protected. So we've enabled both forms and we can now save this somewhere and it will allow us to specify what format we want, uh, .gpg or .epd, we'll use that for now. And we'll save this as encrypted file and put it on the desktop. So we can save that. And now let's maybe take a look and see if we can see what the data looks like if we just go to desktop and cat the encrypted file. So let's ls and we can see encrypted file.epd and we can cat and yeah, it looks like a bunch of random garbage. So that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, this file is totally unreadable by anybody who's not using it here. So we've saved it so we can just exit. So how do we open this again? Well, we can go to EncryptPad. And this is probably the most important part because if you don't learn to do this, then you won't ever get your file back, but you will have very successfully hit it from everyone, including yourself. So let's go ahead and click on Open. And I believe, uh, I actually don't see an open recent, but all right, that's fine. So we'll click on open, we'll go to our desktop, and we'll click on encryptedfile.epd. Now this is where uh, we'll first need to put in our password, nullbyte123. And then we can get the, we can make things a little bit interesting here by hosting, for example, a server where the key is hosted. Uh, now, this is the key repository, and this is the step where we can kind of remotely disable access to this file if we have a remote key rather than a local key that we are relying on. Now, a good scheme for this is also having a backup that's on a USB thumb drive or something like that, so that you don't end up in the situation where uh, someone else's server gets wiped or, or encrypted, uh, and then you don't have access to your encryption key. So it's always good to have a backup when you're doing this sort of thing and make sure that it's maybe on a store uh, a USB thumb drive or something like that and it's stored in a, a safe area where you can access it if your primary key is destroyed. Think of it like the key to your house only that a supercomputer is the only person you can call to get you back in and you don't want to do that and they probably won't so don't lose the key. So here we can actually find the key on the desktop nullbyte key dot key open and then we'll need to provide the final key that, or the final password that we set in order to access the file. So that's null byte 541. There we go. And now we have the instructions that we pasted into this file. So this has been a quick walkthrough on how you can get started using a simple interface to encrypt text or even other files on your computer. Now, if you're interested in learning some more about that and you want to take on some more advanced subjects, there's also a great walkthrough on how to encrypt binary files like a photo or an archive available on the official website, which we'll go and mention in our guide as well. 
Now, before you go throwing around a lot of really strong encryption, you should be aware that it works really well. You need to make sure that you store things in a protected fashion, but also have backups of key files and things like that to make sure you can access it when you really need it. Encryption really works, so if you don't have access, you can't simply call someone and get them to give you access to your data. It is actually gone. So be careful when you are setting passwords and saving key files because that could really come back and get you if the information you're saving is critical. Now there's a couple other limitations you should be aware of, such as setting bad passwords, which opens you up to brute force attacks that might be able to break through the encryption pretty easily. There's also the possibility that if you're using the remote uh, curl format, if you suddenly lose access to a file because you can't connect to it anymore because you don't have an internet connection, that could be extremely inconvenient depending on what file's encrypted. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time.